wondering if I sprinkle that on top, it might almost look a little bit like snow. Doesn't that look lovely? I thought I would start this video with a lovely aesthetic Christmassy shot because that is going to be the vibe of today's video. I've had quite a few plancy ideas, like Christmas related ideas that I've wanted to do for a while and I thought today was a good day to do them because this room is feeling pretty Christmassy already. I've got the, the Christmas tree, me and Ross have made some snowflakes, I've got the twinkly lights, but the living room is not feeling Christmassy at all and to be honest, without spending lots of money and going out and like buying decorations, I can be quite bad at decorating. But I've had a couple of planty ideas that I think, I think they're things that you could to a certain extent do all year round, but I'm going to make them Christmassy today. So that is the plan for this video. But first, if you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learnt over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And yeah, I'm really excited for this video. It's going to be a nice gentle one, so by all means make a cup of tea, do some plant chores with me, or do some decorating with me. And yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So I've just made one of my advent calendar teas and today I'm on the turmeric tea and it's actually really really nice. It's not what I typically choose but it's very delicious. And I also lit a candle just in the attempt to make this feel a little bit more Christmassy as we get into it. And I'm really hoping that what I'm going to attempt is going to work. I'm guessing if you're watching this video then it's probably worked. Uh, but me and Ross ordered some baubles recently when we were decorating the tree. We just got some cheapy ones off Amazon and some of the ones that arrived are transparent like this. They're, um, they're just plastic. Ideally they would be glass for this project but they're just kind of cheapy plasticky ones. And by the looks of it, the top, also Yoli is <laughs> giving herself a very good wash in places that I don't want to be looking at. She's now got the sassiest look on her face looking at me. I swear that dog knows when I'm talking about her. Um, but what I was going to say is by the looks of it, the top of these do come off. Oh, okay. That was a little bit of a struggle, but yeah, they do come off. So I'm thinking of making some really beautiful little hanging terrariums. And obviously that is kind of like plants meets Christmas. I'm not, I, I think it might be quite difficult just because obviously it's a very small hole that I'm going to be trying to get stuff through both ways. But I think, I think it'll look really pretty if it works. So I have actually got, it's very dusty, you can see how often this gets used, but I have actually got some terrarium making tools. And I think the first step is going to be to try and get the decorations that are in there out. And I'm actually thinking that I will be able to use what's in here in my next Christmas Eve project. So I'm going to keep them to one side. But what I'll do as well is I'll put on the screen everything that you will need if you are wanting to make this because I'll also put a picture of one of the finished products so that you can see. So if you're just purely wanting a DIY video, then you can kind of follow along and do it with me. But these I think are going to be very useful. These are just essentially a very long pair of tweezers, but I think getting things in and out is going to be very useful. There we go. So yeah, as I say, I'm going to keep everything that I take out of the baubles to one side. I'm going to just start with one and I'm going to see how it goes. And if it goes well, then we can do multiples. Because this time last year, I don't actually think I decorated for Christmas at all. I'd only, I'd only been in my flat for a month when it was Christmas and I didn't spend, I say I didn't spend that much time here. I was actually here on Christmas day, but I didn't spend a lot of time in the lead up to Christmas. I don't think enough to kind of decorate. Um, also I've got a little funnel and I think that's gonna help. And what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm gonna do a thin layer of sand and then a thin layer of soil and then some sphagnum moss and then I'm gonna put a plant cutting in there. Um, but yeah, it's been lovely actually getting the, getting the flat feeling a little bit Christmassy this year because obviously Ross has just moved in, it's our first Christmas together and it's just quite nice, it's just quite nice, oh that's way too much, um, it's quite nice 
sharing that with someone else and actually he really wanted to be involved in this part of the video I was saying that I was going to do this and he really wanted to get involved with it but but he's away on a work do at the moment and I've got quite a few Christmas related video ideas that I wanted to do this season so I thought I would start with this one and then he could potentially get involved in some of the other ideas if if he wants to and, and also Oh, that's too much water. This is gonna be really finicky. I was gonna say, I've got these little bottles that are like squeezy bottles that you can use to just add a little bit of moisture. And I tried to lightly hydrate that sand and I've just made it very, very wet. So, oh, sorry, baby. Hello, sweetheart. Oh, hello, hello. <laughs> what are you doing? Do you want to make one? No, this is not for you. Uh, but I'm just going to use this one as the trial one. So I'm going to put some sand in, uh, some soil in, sorry, as well. Because there does need to be a little bit of, a little bit of moisture in here, but obviously these aren't going to be fully sealed. I could technically fully seal them if I wanted to, like if I was to run my glue gun around the top of them. I could probably seal them. And actually looking at the top of the bauble, it does look like it's actually a screw top. So I'm sure there's things that I could get if I wanted to properly seal it. But as I say, for the time being, I'm just gonna make these as like holiday decorations. But they are absolutely something that you could do year round. Or also if you've got leftover baubles from Christmas and you want to turn them into something planty, could be a cool idea. But yeah, I'm not gonna be able to get, oh God, I mean, I'm very limited on space and I don't have that many terrarium plants. So I'm really just very much working with what I've got here in the hope that I end up with something quite lovely. Uh, but yeah, so that's what it's looking like so far. And I'm gonna put a little bit of moss in there. <laughs> she should be absolutely knackered. I actually went for a run with her this morning. I um. I typically am not a running kind of gal, but I got dragged out for a run with Emma when Emma was here and I've kind of, I don't want to say caught the bug, I'm not enjoying it, but I'm feeling really good after doing it. So I'm trying to run a couple of times a week with Yodi. And in fact, I had Emma on the phone this morning and she was going for a run as well. So that's our way of kind of motivating each other. Um, but this is live sphagnum moss, so when it gets growing, it should look really beautiful. Like, I've got a propagation box that I'm going to use for the second project in this video. Um, but I've got a propagation box where all of the moss in there has also just continued to grow with the plants. And it looks so lovely. So lovely to the point that I very much want to include it in a project. And in fact, I could be taking little bits of that to put in here now. Because this does look a little bit brown. As I say, I'm going to do a few of these, so I'm going to start with this like this, but then I might go get to that other one. So then plant cutting wise, what I brought over that I think will be small enough and delicate enough and also pretty to go in here are this one. This is my Hoya Bella Louis Bois. I, I know I always say that wrong and I swear to God, one of my New Year's resolutions is to actually learn the name of this plant properly. But I think it's either a Louis Bois or a Lyder Bois. Um, I think that would look really pretty in a little terrarium. And then also, oh my goodness, this one just kind of as an excuse to chop up because it's getting so long, is my Hoya pubera. And this has been through in my bedroom cabinet, my kind of rehab plants that I don't really know what I'm gonna do with cabinet. And it's still propagating in sphagnum moss and it's been like that for such a long time. I think it maybe had four leaves when I first got it. And as you can see, it's huge now. So I think I can get some of that in. And then these two, I'm not quite sure about. One of them, in fact, one of them is Ross's and he doesn't know because as I say, he's away at the moment, but he's got a little Fetonia. And I think a little cutting of that in there might look quite nice. I know I'm not usually a massive fan of pink plants, but for some reason in terrariums, the colors don't bother me as much. I think because they're kind of in their own contained space, there's something about it that just doesn't, I don't know, I quite like it. So. I thought maybe a couple of sneaky cuttings of that. 
And then, I, oh, in fact, I picked this one up and I actually think now this is probably a very bad idea. Um, but I picked up the Philodendron Silver Sword just because I've got a very, very small plant of that. But obviously this would be a very short term solution because this plant does grow relatively quickly and it would outgrow one of these very fast. And in fact, I'd probably have to break this if I wanted to get it out. So, so I don't know. In fact, I think I'm gonna put that one to one side. I'm not sure if that's gonna work. And I might have another poke about my collection and see what else I could use, but I think this is definitely more than enough to get me started. So with this one, considering I have just used the moss that is a little bit more on the brown side, I think I'm maybe gonna put a couple of more colorful plants in there. So I might put a cutting, do I mix them up? Okay, I'm not gonna mix them up to start with. I'm gonna just put a cutting of the Hoya Louis Bois in there. So I've just taken that little cutting there and I'm just gonna remove the bottom two leaves. Oh, I just knocked it over as well. So yeah, it looks like that. And then I'm gonna try and just, oh, is, this is gonna be a squeeze, but I'm gonna just try and push it down so that it kind of goes into the substrate at the bottom and hopefully will start to root. This is one that isn't the fastest grower. Ooh. In fact, it's quite, it's quite fast, but I think should be okay to live in a terrarium environment for a little while. Hoya do amazingly typically in terrariums just because they are slower than a lot of other plants to grow and they do do really well in humid environments. And obviously you can completely control the lighting of this. Like I'm probably gonna hang this one in a window. I think that actually looks really, really pretty. I kind of want to put a little bit more of it in there I think that would look nice. So I'm gonna just do another cut and do the same again. Oops, I just knocked another leaf off. But yeah, and then I'll pop the On. And I think that looks so pretty. And I think that's perfect for Christmas. But as I say, like, if you were to wind some twine or something around the top, you could absolutely make this like a non Christmassy thing as well. So I think I'm going to make a few of them and then maybe hang them in the window. I'm not entirely sure yet. I've got quite a few bubbles to play with. So, oh, in fact, the one with the glitter might be a no-no. I can see that just going everywhere, but I'm gonna do a few more. And in fact, I know I said I wanted to take some of the moss from this propagation box. I haven't opened this prop box in a little while. Oh my God, it's crazy in here. But yeah, look how lovely and green the moss is in there. I feel like that would look so, I mean, to be honest, I feel like that would look so pretty in a bauble, even without other plants in there, to be honest. So I'm gonna just have a play and see what I can come up with, see what works best. The only reason that I say using glass would probably be ideal with these. It's just because long term, I don't know like the grade of plastic on this, it might start to break down. Uh, and obviously then if that happens, it's not gonna be great for the plants. But I mean, to be honest, if you're not that attached to these, you could just like use them as just normal kind of propagation stations and then just kind of break them open when you need them. I mean, to be honest, I know I'm also doing sealed environments. You could just have a plant sticking out the top and then just tie them and hang them. Well, maybe I'll do some of that as well. I'm not sure yet. But yeah, just taking the moss from that propagation box. Look how beautiful that is. 
the other thing if he wants to like really kind of go very in depth and create like a beautiful little world in a terrarium you could absolutely use Christmas moss as well not just because it sounds Christmassy but because it just looks gorgeous it's much more carpet like in its texture and you can buy that online but I typically just go out and forage that like I often see it when I'm out walking with Yoli and in fact earlier this year me and Ross uh when was it it feels like it was Christmas time last year, but I think it was actually February, March time maybe. We went out and we foraged some Christmas moss and we made uh, we made um, terrariums based on The Last of Us, which was the show we were watching at the time. Um, and that was really lovely. So maybe we'll do something again like that this year. Um, and on the note of Ross, I think for this one, I'm gonna use a little bit of his Fetonia. I'm sure he won't mind if I use a little bit. So again, I'm just going to remove the bottom two leaves. Probably don't have to, but I'm just trying to avoid rotting. And then getting it in. Oh, there we go. Oh my goodness, that looks so pretty. That looks so lovely. Oh, I kind of want to put more in there. Might do one more little bit in that one because I love the look of that. Doesn't that look lovely? I'll put clips of them in in different lights as well because I feel like maybe this light isn't the best. But I think that looks so gorgeous. Yeah. So pretty. And this one's just all like tinsel in there. I'm not sure. Oh, it's loads of bits of tinsel. Keep that well away from the candle. <laughs> My camera battery just died, so I thought I would change the angle again. Um, but this one so far is just soil, and I'm putting lots of the very green growing sphagnum moss in there. And I might just keep this as a very green one and just put some of the Hoya pubera cuttings in there, because I think that would look quite nice. I'd quite like to have them all looking looking a bit different. And I did think as well, and especially if I'd got on this a little bit earlier and I'd kind of thought about this more in advance because I did have a look on Amazon and it's now weeks to wait if I wanted this, but you could get little kind of model figurines of Santa Claus and like Christmassy things and create little Christmas scenes in there. Obviously I'm not doing that, but that is just an idea. Just in general as well, like, I know I mentioned that me and Ross uh, made, made terrariums inspired by The Last of Us. And um, we were saying at the time it'd be really cool if you were really into terrarium making to kind of create loads of little worlds based around like your favorite TV shows and movies. And in fact, Christmas present idea, if you've got a friend that is really, really into TV and movies, why not find out what their favorite TV shows and movies are and make them a terrarium based off that. That would be a really cool, really low budget. So you could probably like make it in a peanut butter jar or something. But that would be a really cool idea. Really cool idea. I um, I think every single year so far up to this, the one video, the one kind of like Christmassy video I have done has been like a Christmas gift guide video. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna make that this year just because I feel like I've kind of covered everything in other years. I know there's a lot of people already doing it and I'm not, I don't know if people need more ideas, but I think, I think homemade presents are super underrated. And if you're gonna get a planty person something that you're not having to post, why not make something? Why not make something? Um, so yeah, this one is just very, very green. But that's what it's looking like. And I'm actually looking at them thinking they need a little bit of a clean up. I'll give them a wipe down before I hang them. Also, if any of you try this, either as a Christmas thing or just as like 
a general hanging terrarium thing, please do tag me on Instagram or something or send me a picture because I would love to see what you come up with. I think I'd like to do maybe, I don't know, like one, two, three, four, five, um, maybe like 10 of them and like hang them on a nice string or something. I don't know, I'll see how many more I've got. I also kind of want to put some more plants in them, some different types of plants. But I'm just wondering what else would fit. Um, I've got little bits and bobs in my prop box here. Oh, this might work quite well. In fact, it doesn't look amazing. I've got a little section of a Pallionia pulchra here, which is very attached to moss. But there's some little sections that I'm like, could I cut some of that and put that in here? I've also got some little bits of um, pepperonia. I've got some pepperonia watermelon. And in fact, I've got a very little one just there that could probably go in. Oh, okay, let's start throwing some more things in because I think this is gonna be more interesting and more diverse when you're kind of like looking at them all together. I'd like to have lots of different colours and textures and all sorts. Oh, another one there that could probably go in as well. That's teeny tiny. But I think it could work. Have any of you had any creative planty holiday decoration ideas. I would love to know them if you have. Because yeah, as I say, I've, I've always got lots of things that I'd like to do. I rarely actually get around to doing them, but I would really love to know if you've got any other creative things that you've done. Because this is really fun. And there's something really satisfying about doing this. As I say, I thought it was gonna be more finicky and the fact that it's not is making me love it even more. So yeah, you can't really tell, but that's that's a little peperomia one. And it's got such lovely pink stems, they're just kind of standing out. And I'm taking the tinsel out of these, and to be honest, I could probably leave some of the tinsel in there if I wanted them to sparkle. I don't want to overwhelm it though because I do really like these as just kind of simple little terrariums. I think I'm going to save the sparkly things for the next thing that I'm going to do. But it would work. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it for the time being. And although it's just going to be me and Ross on Christmas Day, I've got nine of my friends coming over on the 28th and a couple of their partners haven't been to my flat before and there's something about when people come into your planty space I know it doesn't have to be immaculate I know it doesn't have to be perfect but because I'm so proud of my plants most of the time I really want to like show them off in their best light so or that, like, although I'm not saying, I, like, I probably would be making things like this at this time of year anyway if people weren't coming over. But there's something about, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to be able to show my collection off a little bit. So I'd like everything, if possible, looking as nice as I know it can at this time of year. Because, obviously, this is the season for things to be going a little bit wrong sometimes plant care wise, like it's colder, there aren't as many hours of light in the day, things can go a little bit tits up here and there, but although I've had some drama, oh I just have noticed another thing going on, a very yellow leaf, oh I will check that plant after filming this video, um, but on the whole things are going okay and I'd like I just want my collection to look nice, you know? So I feel like little touches like this will hopefully be appreciated. And the next thing I'm gonna do as well, which I know I keep saying as if it's some big secret, um, but the next thing I'm gonna do as well, I think will look really, really cool. So I'm gonna do a couple more of these and then I'm gonna get onto that. I literally love these so much. 
I've just grabbed a couple of other Hoyas that I think might look really lovely in there as well. I've got my Hoya YSEA Tricolor, which is so slow growing, um, and this Hoya Matilde, which has been growing really well in a cabinet environment, so I see no reason why it wouldn't get on well in a terrarium environment. So I'm going to do a couple with these in as well. So I've made eight of them and I'm just going to take a piece of string now and I'm just going to run it because I think I'm going to hang them in the window. I'm just going to run it from one end to the other just so I've got a rough measurement and then I will think about how I can attach the baubles and get them to stay in place. This is the point at which I started getting a little bit, let's just say a little, a little bit stressed with the fact that I couldn't get it on the window. Oh my variegated euphorbia has fallen. Oh no, look what I've done. And I was literally taking out plants like flies. Okay, so I have had to take a step away from this for a moment because my God, attempting to maneuver amongst the plants is doing my actual head in. And as you can see, there's been quite a few plant dramas. There's been plants falling off shelves and I've been getting caught on things. And honestly, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult what I'm trying to do here. So I decided to do it on the bedroom window instead, just because the bedroom window has the same dimensions as the one in the living room. So I thought getting it in place here would be easier and then I could just transfer it over to the living room window. That being said, I haven't actually done that yet. I am not gonna lie, I love it on the bedroom window. I know the whole point was to make the living room a little bit more Christmassy, but look how pretty they look. I feel like the camera is just not doing them justice. I think they look so lovely. And so yeah, they're staying here for now, but I might possibly make another set for the living room. And the next Christmassy thing that I'm gonna do is 100% going in the living room. So let's get on with that, shall we? But first, we're just gonna take a very quick break because an early Christmas present has just arrived and I'm super, super, super excited about this. So I thought I would do it on camera, open it on camera, do it on camera open it on camera with you guys. But basically one of my really good friends, Sam, he started up a fragrance company called Fuel, I think about three or four years ago now. And basically one of the, one of the many things that Fuel does is they work with artisan fragrance brands and they stock them. And I'm not a massive perfumey person myself, but they've recently started stocking one called Le Jardin Retrové. And I just absolutely love it because basically the whole ethos of the brand is about reconnecting you to your inner garden. They've got loads of botanical fragrances fragrances and I was very kindly invited to, in fact I'll start opening this, um, I was very kindly invited to the launch of Le Jardin Retrové at Fortnum and Mason in London recently which was so much fun and I got to smell lots of their fragrances and they're just really really beautiful and it was done in such a lovely way it was all they kind of, they took you through a meditation at the beginning where you kind of closed your eyes and you pictured what your inner garden would look like. For me, obviously mine was my jungle. Um, but then they used different, different fragrances throughout that to kind of like bring you into the experience, which I thought was so, so, so lovely. Oh my goodness, this is very generous. They've sent me, oh, lots of stuff. And this is just one of the packages. The thing I really love as well, is the artwork. I just thought that was beautiful when I saw it before. I know I should really have like a fragrance stick or something, but I'm just using a bit of the paper that they were wrapped in because I'm not that fancy. Oh my goodness, that's gorgeous. This is literally so exciting. I'm so excited to try all of them. I'm not gonna spray all of them now just because they have sent me quite a lot. So thank you, Fuel. And yeah, as I say, if any of you are thinking of plant related, garden related Christmas presents, I would highly recommend this and I will link it down below. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited about this. But yes, anyway, okay, on to the next planty project. So planty project number two involves this very neglected looking little, I think it's an Ikea mini greenhouse. Um, I think it's called an Aki bar, Aki bar, I'll put the name on the screen. 
Um, but as you can see at the moment, it's looking very unhappy. I have had a little clear out of it, but it's got lots of plants in there. It's got lots of propagations that have just dried out. I haven't been paying it much attention. There's things in there that are not looking good. So I thought I would attempt to transform it into a lovely little winter wonderland. So as I say, in the time that I've had this Ikea Ake Bar greenhouse, I just have not cared for the plants inside it basically. I don't know why, I think because, but I, don't, I don't, honestly don't have a good reason. I just, maybe I haven't put things in here that are kind of like exciting me enough. I've got lots of Tradescantra, I've got lots of Pothos. I've got some dying spider plants in here, but it's a really lovely little greenhouse container. And I don't think it was that expensive. I think it was only about 16 pounds. Um, but I'd like to, because it's all lit up with the grow lights, I'd like to turn it into like a functional grow space and be able to look at it and appreciate it. And especially at this time of year when I'm trying to make nice kind of Christmassy decorations, I thought I could just Christmasify it a little bit. Uh, and then I'll figure out what I'm going to do with the plants, the healthy plants that are in here afterwards. Because, you know, I was saying earlier in the video that I really... Whoa, oh, water spillage. Oops. <laughs> Um, that I really liked the look of the propagation box that I've got because all the moss is very green and lovely. I was thinking if I seal this, there's no way I couldn't make this into kind of like a display propagation box because I think often prop boxes are so pretty and they just don't get, you, you don't get to appreciate them as much. So I kind of feel like for now I'll make it Christmassy, but after Christmas I'll be able to just take the Christmas elements away and I'll still be able to have a really nice kind of functional grow space uh, that also looks really nice and it'll also hopefully mean that then oh dear look at this pothos cutting oh my god that's bad um but it'll also hopefully mean that if this is just like a pretty display propagation box or if I've, if I've got a cutting and I'm just in the kitchen, I can just pop it straight in here instead of having to go through to the bedroom and open up a big box. Because, like, I'm, I'm not a massive one for lamps at home. In fact, I, I don't think I've got any lamps at all, apart from one by Ross's desk, actually. But I don't have any lamps in my flat. I do just use grow lights as kind of, like, my, my cosy lights as well. And if you can make them functional and create nice propagation zones, then why not do it? Um, so, the one thing that I should do, and I can't do right now because I don't have the stuff that I need to be able to do it, is I should, as I say, seal this. And what I would typically do to kind of create like either a cabinet propagation box, terrarium environment, I would use a shower seal and I'll link the one that I use down below, but I don't actually have it at the moment. So this is something that I'm gonna have to do afterwards. But for the time being, I'm just gonna put some, I'm gonna put some soil at the bottom and then I'm gonna to attempt to try and make the moss kind of climb the back wall a little bit more by using some off cuts I've got of the grids that I used to make moss poles. I don't know why it's not focusing, I think because it is so fine, but I've got some of that grid here. Um, and I have had some of you saying before, will this not just rust? I know when I started first using this for moss coal, some of you were saying like, that's a really bad idea. But I have been using it for years now and I've never had issues with rust. Like I keep my moss poles on the whole pretty hydrated all the time and I've never found rust to be an issue. So that's what I'm gonna do. If I find out a few years down the line that it needs replacing, then that is my own fault. But you can also get the stuff that's been coated in in plastic. I know a lot of people do use that, but I'm just gonna go ahead with the stuff that I've got. Because to be honest, stuff like that is so thin, it would probably just be thrown away. So waste not, want not. But yeah, I actually can't believe it's almost Christmas. I know, like, I know every year people go, oh my God, where's this year gone? But genuinely, this year, I actually don't know where the time has gone. It has flown by. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, what have I done this year? I actually don't know. It's all kind of blurred into one. But I was talking to my friend the other day about like New Year's resolutions and stuff. And uh, to be honest, I don't ever kind of set 
oh, I, I've, that I stick to anyway. I don't ever set kind of strict New Year's resolutions with myself because I feel like I'm never going to be able to actually stick to them and then that'll probably be more frustrating in the long run. Um, but I've got a few ideas of just like lifestyle habits that I would like to either start or upkeep come the new year. And I think for me, I don't know why, like I, I thought this recently, there's there's been something, there's been some sort of kind of mental shift with me since turning 30. And that might sound really weird. I know it's a completely like psychological thing. And I know some people like have said this to me in the past, like, oh, you do just feel a bit different when you when you hit that number. <laughs> and I don't know that like I've just I noticed I've started just taking better care of myself. Obviously, I quit nicotine very soon after turning 30. And that's something I'd wanted to do for a really long time. I'd wanted to quit smoking for years. Um, I haven't touched it since. And it's been October, November, December almost three months now, almost three months. So I'm ridiculously proud of myself, honestly. It's a habit that I've been trying to kick on and off since I was about 15 years old. So I'm very happy that I finally managed to do it. And also alcohol as well. I haven't drunk in about two months now and I'm feeling really good for it. Not that I was a big heavy drinker before, but I've just noticed feeling a lot better since. I've been drinking more water. I've been trying to do more exercise. I've been trying to just form healthier habits in my life. And I've been feeling, I've been feeling better for it. So New Year's wise, I just want some more of that. I just wanna, I wanna keep going with that. And I want to do things that are actually like good and nourishing for me. Kind of like in the same way you'd look after your plants, but look after myself for the right reasons if that makes sense. So I think that's probably my overall goal going into the new year. Uh, what about you guys? Do any of you have any New Year's resolutions? Do you have anything that you want to start doing? Any new hobbies you want to take up? Anything like that? Let me know in the comments because I'd be very interested to know. And maybe you'll inspire me as well. hydrating the soil ever so slightly so it's not bone dry. But then obviously when I do seal this, I'm hoping that it will just kind of keep itself hydrated and I might only need to spray it like once every few months or so. And so looking at what I've currently got in my propagation box, I've got some sections of the Philodendron Gloriosum, which I know does get quite big but I think it could comfortably live in here for quite a while. I am planning on, I'm not planning on like keeping this a uh, sealed contained space forever. It is gonna be something that I can swap in and out. I've also got some, ooh, some sections of my white princess. And I know I said in a video recently that a part of my white princess that I chopped up was going a little bit pink. I'll put a clip in, but this one is also going a little bit pink. It never did that before I chopped the plant up. So I don't know why it's doing it now. Um, but I'm thinking maybe just transferring some of the plants over from here to here in a pretty way. And then also in terms of Christmassy stuff, some of the baubles, like the ones that I said I didn't want to take the glitter out of, I was thinking if I have some of them just like poking out of the moss, if I decorate some of them with bits like this that I took out of the baubles, I think that would look really nice. I think that would look really pretty. I think I'm just gonna have a play about, see what I can come up with. I also know I said I was gonna try and use this. I'm actually not sure how I'm gonna use the offcuts of the wire. Um, maybe I'll bend it into kind of like an arch and then put stuff over it. I'm not sure. I'll figure it out as I go. <laughs> I was also thinking some really nice kind of like um, branches and bits of wood would probably look nice in here, like if I was to go out and forage some. And I did actually have some lying around from a propagation station hanger that I made as part of a Patreon video a while ago. I decided to take that down when Ross moved in because I was trying to clear a bit of wall space. And I was going to keep that, it was like a really nice stick, I was going to keep that and I actually put it outside the front door of my flat and I was like, I'll leave it there. 
if I want it again, I can go and get it, as in like outside the main building. Um, and then they chopped a tree down close to the outside of the building and they cleared loads of wood and they also cleared that stick. So I've lost it forever now, sadly. But I'm looking at the, so I've made like a little archway with the wire, which is very transparent. You might not be able to see it that well on camera, but I've made a little archway and I'm kind of thinking that I want to do more running up the back wall of the cabinet. So I might see what other bits of wire I've got and then just kind of do that because then I feel like I can tuck moss into that and I can kind of have it going up a little bit. I don't necessarily want it climbing all of the back wall, but I think it would look quite nice if it was climbing some of it. So I'm going to see what else I've got. So I've just found quite a big bit, which defeats the point of doing off cuts because this is definitely one that I would use for a moss pole, but I'm thinking if I just take a little bit and run it up the back, I feel like that would work quite well. Maybe just a little strip. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. This is going to be too big. I reckon it'll work. There's, so there's nothing holding it against the back wall. Mm, let me think. I was going to say either that or I could put it through the little twisty clips I've got and kind of have it as a backboard. And then I guess I could kind of use it as a trellis. I don't have to put moss going all the way through it. Do I like that? I think maybe let's just start trying to get bits in and I'll get a feel for it as we go. I think that's probably the best idea. Um, so getting bits out of the prop box it is just like a carpet of moss because all of the roots have grown so much into it. So I'm always wondering if I could do a complete transfer from one to the other. I'm going to just try and lift bits out in sections if I can. Oh my goodness, it is so rooty. <laughs> Dandeliana. There are obviously some Dandeliana cuttings in here at some point. So, <laughs> my thought is now, everything's bigger than I thought it was going to be. It looks bigger in here, so I'm actually taking out the little bridge that I just put in. I'm thinking, should I just... Should I even bother with the grid? Or should I just have it as pretty little display area for plants. I don't actually know. I'm kind of thinking maybe I should just leave the back open and just transfer the plants in. What would you guys do? What would you do? Okay, I have an idea. I have an idea. The back's coming off. Because what I'm thinking, oh, I hate that noise, um, is the little twisty clips that I've got on the back just there that I will also link down below in the comment section because, uh, the comment section, the description box, because I know I always get questions about them. They could be what I use for the Christmas decorations and I could make the main down bit a little bit Christmassy. Um, I'm also going to just chop that leaf because that doesn't look that healthy. So yeah, okay, I think that's what I'm going to do. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just focus on getting the plants in here and getting them looking pretty first. I've also got a philodendron marmee here, which is a plant that out of the prop box Oh, in fact, it's just fully attached to this other one. 
Ah, I might not be able to get all of these in. Um, but the Philodendron Mame is one that out of a prop box I really struggle with and it's a plant that I have never successfully grown. But in a prop box environment, it's doing amazingly. So I'm thinking it would be nice to be able to have it on display, be able to appreciate it and be able to look at it, but without having to worry about getting it out of that environment. So maybe this is the perfect way for me to be growing this plant. And then I've got some wet sticks in the prop box that are still very early days, haven't sprouted, haven't rooted. I'm going to just keep them in here as well so that I can just watch them as they develop and grow. And I'm going to use the rest of the base of the prop box, like with the perlite and everything. I'm still going to use that in here. In fact, I'm just going to take a little bit more sphagnum moss and I'm going to just use it to help raise up some of the plants at the back so that I can get a little bit more dimension in there. And actually, the perlite that is at the bottom of the prop box here I'm wondering if I sprinkle that on top, it might almost look a little bit like snow. <laughs> so I'm going to try it. You know what? I think that actually works really well. So some of the gaps I've got, do I want to do Christmas baubles? Yeah, I do. Um, so I'm just going to take off the string of the baubles. So I've just got that bit and then I'm just going to pop that down into the moss. And I'm thinking when the grow lights hit it, it should look really lovely. I've got another one, I've got other ones here that are filled with stuff. I think it might be, is that too much? So I've got some snowflakes that were meant to go on the tree. Oh my goodness, glitter's just gone everywhere. Good, good. Um, I'm wondering if I could incorporate some of them because I think they'd look quite nice as well. I can actually hang them pretty easily off the back of the cabinet. So I think that works quite well. Obviously long term using things like this is not going to be like I couldn't keep these in the prop box all year round just because they probably would biodegrade, start going a bit mouldy. But just for the time being, to Christmas it up a bit, why not? looks nice um, and then the stuff that I took out of the baubles earlier I could either have this kind of hanging down from the top but I think I'm just gonna kind of attempt to frame the plants maybe have some of these strands going through the um going through the moss as well maybe I'll use the tinsel for that because the good thing about this cabinet is it's got lots of kind of nooks and crannies that you can tuck things up. That's a weird way of saying it, isn't it? Um, but yeah, it provides some scope for you to be able to do things without having to... What am I saying? I know what I'm saying. Without having to use lots of extra like sticky tape and things to hold things in place. It seems to just hold them quite nicely for you. And then the tinsel as well, because this is individual strands, I'm not gonna put too much of this in because I know if I put loads of it in, it's gonna be a nightmare to get out again. But I'm gonna put some of it in. I feel like as well, once it's under the grow light, you're not gonna need, like it's gonna stand out. I don't think I'm gonna need loads and loads and loads.
just some little bits here and there. And also on a practical note, probably not that much, but I'm guessing because this is reflective, it will just help to reflect the grow light. And so if anything, it's probably just gonna help things for the plants. I forgot to say as well, the grow light will be sitting on top of this. It's not gonna be in there, so I don't need to worry about, not that my grow light is massively heat emitting anyway, but I don't need to worry about like flammable materials or anything like that. Yeah. Might put in one more bauble at the back. Okay. I feel like once the grow lights are on, that's gonna look really, really lovely. So I'm just gonna give it a quick wipe down the front so that it's nice and clean. And then let's put them on and let's have a look. Okay, it's back in its place and I think it looks pretty cool, but moment of truth, let's put the grow lights on and see if it looks lovely and Christmassy. Oh, that's the wrong button. Oh my goodness, I absolutely love that. I think that looks so pretty and I'm just oh my god I love how I'm able to actually appreciate those plants now because before they were just stuck in a propagation box oh my god I love it and I think the perlite works really well as snow as well what do you guys think because I am really happy with the, how that's turned out that looks even better to how I thought it was gonna look it's looking more sparkly in real life as well I don't know why I don't think the camera's picking it up as well but I think that looks so pretty I'm always tempted to get more like little containers and do little grow light setups around my flat to, as I say, just use as like nice lamps because I think that looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm really genuinely chuffed with with how that's turned out, yay! So yeah, those are the Christmassy things that I wanted to get done in today's video and as I say, I have got a list of loads of other kind of fun Christmassy planty projects that I'd like to get through. So my aim is to get those out over the next week or so. So if you'd like to do more Christmas decorating things, keep an eye on my videos. Also, if you've got Christmassy plant decoration projects that you've been doing, tag me on Instagram, comment them down below. I would love to see what you guys are up to, but yeah if you also as i've already said at the beginning of this video but if you give any of these projects a go please let me know because i'd love to see them but yes i really hope that you enjoyed this video i had so much fun making it and i'm excited to do more so if you did enjoy this video please make sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel have a lovely day and i will see you in the next video Sexy butt lovers. <laughs>